Yes, Lord, we abide in you because you came for us. You laid it down for us, Lord, when we were far from you. You brought us into a solid place, which is you. We thank you, God, that we abide in you now. You are in us, we are in you, Lord God, and because of that, we are alive. We are spiritually alive. We are filled with your spirit. We are part of your new creation, your new eternal creation that will culminate in the new heavens and new earth where the curse is reversed and we are full and complete in you. We thank you for that, God. We thank you, Jesus. We wanna be fruitful in you. Help us to continue to abide in you, to hear your word and receive what you have for us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, we're gonna get started. Go ahead and take a seat with God's word and Nancy Yee is going to read for us from Matthew. This is Matthew chapter seven, verses 24 through 29. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Yes, amen, the word of the Lord. All right, so before uh, we came back to this area, we lived in Seattle. We came back here in about 2011, and we were there for four years, and we had our, our last child, Matthew, up there, so we had three total, three little ones, and um, I was a pastor, uh, part of a pastor team up there, and uh, we bought our first home up there, and man, that's scary. Remember that, anybody? That's like a big, that's a lot of money, you know, and it, it's a lot of loan. And uh, it was risky, and I remember just like, oh, hopefully this is the one. You know, we found a nice house, nice little house, uh, and uh, great location. We were on a hill. We could see the Olympic range over uh, to the west, and, um, and we had a cul-de-sac and the kids got to play out there and we had some little apple trees our kids could climb. Super great blessing from the Lord. But when we were looking at this place, when we were making the decision, I got on my inspector hat, not an engineer at all, don't know what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm looking and I'm thinking, man, the only concern I have about this house is it's kind of built on a slope. Like there, it's on a hill, it's nice, but half of it's on a slope, so it's got this walled foundation, and uh, so I went into the crawl space, right, with my headlamp on, and I'm, and I'm checking, I'm like, man, the only thing that I know for sure when you buy a house is make sure the foundation is good, right? Steve's telling me, yes, that's true. So I'm down there, I'm like, okay, it's dry, that's good, because Seattle is not dry. You, you need good drainage, all right? And it was rock, it was on rock. So I was like, okay, we're going to pull the trigger on this one, and it was great. Uh, now, if it wasn't solid, and if the drainage was bad, it would become what? A, a nightmare, right? Yeah, just a money pit, all right? Um, so, so that was good. We, we, we succeeded in this purchase because it had solid ground. Now, the, the passage that Matthew uh, captured for us, Jesus' sermon, it's talking about something similar. It's talking about having a solid foundation, Jesus is calling you and me today through his word to build not our house but our lives on solid rock because like in Seattle, wow, I tell you man, it rains a lot up there. Like in Seattle, it rains and the storms come and the floods rise. And if you don't have a solid foundation, you're gonna crash. Um, Jesus, because of his great love for you, he came into his creation to help you and me move from this shaky, unstable sand foundation that we were all born on, the sand. 
and move us onto solid rock because he loves us. He wants us to not be shaken. Uh, And he wants us to build lives that last, that remain, that pass forward even through the storm of death. That's what he wants to do for us. That's what he wants to do this morning. So let's, let's go back, listen to Jesus' words again, and we're gonna go back to verse 24 here. Jesus said, again, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Okay, I wanna, we wanna be the wise people in this metaphor today. Uh, So first question is, what words is Jesus talking about? These words of mine, what's his reference? Sermon on the Mount? Yeah, these are the concluding verses of the Sermon on the Mount. This is how Jesus ties it all together. Matthew five through seven, this mega sermon, this epic sermon, he's closing and he's landing the plane with this, this passage. So these words, might, if you remember Matthew five through seven, this three chapter uh, new way of living for his disciples, for those who have attached themselves to Jesus, to those who have Thank God, given, been given the eyes to see that, wow, this is the one. This guy's got the words of life. We're going to go with him. He's laying out the new way for the new creation. It's different than the old way. It's different than what we grew up when we were growing up on sand and living in sand. It's a different way. It's, sometimes it's called the new law, but law has kind of negative connotations. It's the new instruction. It's the new path. It's the narrow path that leads to life. It is the way of flourishing, the title of our series. So let's capture this today, just so we remember what Jesus is referring to here when we're talking about these words. Matthew 5, 7, it's your first fill, and Jesus has given us the new way of life. Because if you're in Christ or Jesus calling you to himself this morning, you are part of God's new humanity. Something very different. Spiritually resurrected. Part of God's renewed life. So we're gonna go back and see um, how Jesus ties us together. But let me just, let me give a few highlights, first of all, just so we remember what we're talking about, Matthew 5 through 7. Remember in this, he, he's calling us to a greater righteousness than the Pharisees, the religious people. And he can do that because we have something greater than they had. What is it? Yeah. Jesus, forgiveness of sins. You've been washed, a once for all time sacrifice since past, present, future. You've been covered. You are forgiven, you are clean, you are justified, you are made new in Christ. You are united to him. You have been made right with God because of what Jesus did for you that your works could not do. All right, so you are something new. And so God is able to put his spirit in you because he's cleansed you and now he can call us to a higher way of living, a way befitting of the new heavens and new earth a way befitting sons and daughters of God, people in his kingdom, the new humanity. And it's it's a narrow path, it's it's like a high bar here, right? Uh, Now if someone has something against you and you know about it, you don't wait for them to come to you, you don't blow them off, what do you do? Go and be reconciled, right? You settle conflicts uh, quickly. Uh, If something's causing you to sin, you don't just bury it or deny it, eh, minimize it, no, what do you do? Gouge it out. Cut it off, deal with it. You honor the marriage covenant. You let your yes be yes, your no be be no. You don't like obscure speech or try to get away with stuff, right? You don't hit back, you don't retaliate. What do you do? Bam, turn the other cheek. Absorb the blow and bless your enemy. Do good to your enemy. Love your enemy. Pray for them. Radical stuff, man. You can't do it without Jesus. If you're not born again, no chance, right? Okay, don't hate those who are against you, love them. Uh, Don't give, pray, or fast, or do religious things, or come to church to impress others, to win their praise. No, do it in secret, do it low key, because your Father will reward you in heaven. Forgive as you've been forgiven. Store up treasures in heaven, not on earth. Seek first God's kingdom. Ask, seek, knock. Don't just depend on your own strength, your own wisdom, or those around you. Go to God. 
Watch out for false teachers. Let your light shine before others. Be salty. Right? This is, this is Matthew 5 through 7. These are the words that Jesus wants us to hear and do what with them? Put them into practice. Do them. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go back to his word again. Verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. So you can be part of this group or this other group. But everyone who hears these words of mine does not put them into practice. It's like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Two groups, wise builders on the rock. Here's a picture for you. This is what it looks like, all right? Wise builders on the rock. Jesus said this group of, these are the people that hear his words, put them into practice. Um, Next group, oh actually wait, hearing and putting into practice, doing Jesus' words. What else do we hear here? Uh, We are to be hearing Jesus' words, putting them into practice, and there's a little bit of an interesting bit here. We're to put it on the rock, we're to build on the rock, we're to live our lives on the rock. I'm thinking, well, what is the rock? Oh, yeah. Dang, you guys are good. It took me a while to get this one. Hannah, Samuel's mother, knows the answer. 1 Samuel 2, 2, there's no one holy like the Lord. There's no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Isaiah knew it. Isaiah 26, 4, trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself is the rock eternal, unshakable, solid, lasting, Jesus told the crowns that he is the stone the builders rejected that has become the cornerstone of God's new temple, the people of God, you and me and people all over the world. 1 Peter 2.6 tells us that Jesus is a chosen and precious cornerstone. And listen, the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. This is solid ground. This is the rock we are to build our lives on. This is the space. Build your life there. Let's be there. Let's not be here. Let's not be, next line, foolish builders on the sand. This is not where you wanna build your life. The rains come, the streams rise, the winds blow and beat against that house and it falls with a great crash. So what's the sand? The sand is everything else that's not Jesus, that's not God, right? It's not hearing God's word, it's not hearing Jesus, or it's hearing him but not putting what he has said repeatedly into practice. That's the sand. Let's not be there. Let's not build our lives there. It's, all, it's the world. It's, it's living apart from God, without God. It's listening to and putting on the, the practices of the world, the messages of the world, seeking first the, the words and wisdom of the world or conventional wisdom or the world or our own thoughts or the way, what, what looks right in our own eyes, our own wisdom. It's, it's eating from the tree of death instead of the tree of life. It's the way of the, the foolish person instead of the wise person. So the, the question that Jesus really provokes for us this morning is, where are you? Where are you? Where are you today? Where have you been this week? What have you been building on? What are you building your life on? What are you spending your time, your energy, your resources, your passions on? Where are you? And quick note, the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against both houses. Right? That's your next fill in. 
Storms come, storms come. Storms come and beat against all of us, right? It's not, we don't have immunity when we're on the rock. Storms come, betrayals happen, we get sinned against, we lose jobs, we lose a client, we face a hardship, we get cancer, we grieve, we lose loved ones. Storms come. Jesus did not say if you build your house on rock there won't be rain. Right, well, then what's the difference? Well, <laughs> if you're building your house on sol- something solid, you're gonna stand. Yeah, and you have God with you in this stuff. People get frustrated, Christians get frustrated, I get frustrated when God does not take the storm away. Why is it storming God? Why is this thing hitting me? Why did that happen? I thought you loved me. It's like I do, man. You were on sand before, the difference now is I'm with you. You are in me, I am in you. In the storm, through the storm. And you're secure in him so that when the storm hits, you know that you will not be undone by that storm. There's no storm that can come against you and tear you apart because you are in Christ and he's got you and he's gonna hold you together through that. You're gonna get beat, you're gonna get weather torn up. It's gonna be rough sometimes, but Jesus will hold you through. You and anything else that you've built on the rock, the rest gets blown away. If you're on the rock now, you know that you will be completely healed someday, right? You'll be brought through death into new heavens, new earth, new body. You will be fully restored. We will all receive the full healing that Jesus has secured for us on the cross. We'll get it. It's ours because you're in God, because you're in the rock. It's the rock eternal, the only lasting place, the only thing that will remain unshaken when everything is shaken. Thank you, Jesus. Again, the big question is, where are you? That's your fill-in, where are you? Where are you building your house? Where are you building your life? Not that person over there or that group over there, but where are you? This is the question Jesus provoked as I'm reading this passage this week, I'm wrestling with it. Are you A, stuck and building on sand? Some people are stuck and building on sand. They don't even know there's a rock. They think this sand pit is all there is. Anybody remember that when you were there? It's all sand, you think. I'll do the best I can with what I have. Try to make something. I know it's not gonna last, but it's better than just, you know, laying down here in the sand. Stuck and building on the sand, man. If you're hearing this today, listen. Jesus is calling you on rock. There is a solid place. He's the rock. He's calling you to himself this morning. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. You don't know what storm's gonna come tomorrow. It will come. In the big storm of death and judgment, that's coming for all of us. Don't wait. Seize the day. Jesus is calling you onto the rock, calling calling you to himself. If that's you or you're unsure, maybe you're just unsure, man, I don't know, I think I'm on the rock. Come up afterward, talk to the prayer ministry team, talk to me or Dan, let's sort this out. You can be fully confident that you're on the rock and secure in God forever, whatever comes. You can be secure in that. You can be confident of that. We're happy to show you how Jesus wants to bring you into that. Now, if you're on the rock, if you're in the rock, and the rock is in you, Thank God, right? Because we didn't do anything to make that happen. We were dead in our sins, lost. Whew. And some of you got to, you grew up on the rock. You never were not on the rock. Thank you, Jesus. But some of us, B, are on the rock, but still building on sand. On the rock, still building on sand. 
Half the house we're building is on the rock, half is on sand. There's a guy at our former church a while back. Uh, this guy, young guy, had, had, from externally looking at this dude, he had everything. I got to know his story, he was in sales, he, young professional, making a lot of money, just, and I, as I heard his story, man, things just came, seemed to come easily for this guy. He was just easy going, he was confident, comfortable, just, uh, you know, one of those dudes. And um, he had all, and then storm hit. This storm of his own making. Uh, he, he got into an adulterous affair. Um, again, he had everything, he was in Christ. He had a, a wife, young, beautiful, smart, amazing wife. Uh, had a baby on the way, and he gets into this adulterous affair. So he's got this solid place, and he starts building on sand. And last we spoke, years ago, um, I don't know how this thing shook out, right? Just because part of you is on the rock, part of you is on the sand, that whole, that whole thing may have crumbled. He may have lost it all. I know, they were trying to work through it last we talked, but there's no guarantees. Sometimes the sand looks fun. Sometimes we get nostalgic for the sand. Sometimes I'll hear an old song from college or something like that, and it just starts, my heart starts to think about old things, sand living. <laughs> and it, it's kind of fun. But I'm like, no, thank you, Jesus. You got me on the right. The more I think about it, there's things that will lead you to the sun, that will lure you to the sand. We gotta be aware of that. Jesus wants us to take stock this morning. Where are you? Man, if you tell a lie, somewhere along the way, high school, college, I just became, uh, I was a good liar, uh, which is not a good thing. <laughs> like I just, I, I would avoid problems, I'd avoid conflicts, I'd try to make my look, myself better than I did, what I was, and just lying. And what happens when you lie? Then you have to tell another lie, right? To cover that lie. And now in Christ, it's a huge transition, like how do I undo this? Like I'm used to building on sand, I've gotten good at this thing, this sand way. And I had to learn to, okay, if I lie, if that happens, sometimes I fall back into the default, I have a choice, am I gonna confess? which is not great, because you look bad, which is what you try not to do, because that's why you lied. <laughs> <laughs> or you can lie again. And there's been a series of those decisions, and the more you practice that new way, that, that solid way, it frees you up and you're, you're not dabbling in sand anymore. But that's what lying does. You know, if you, maybe you have a bad habit, and the habit, is turning into an addiction. And it's starting to rule your life and you're spending more time in the sand than on the rock. It's got this pull. Are you dealing with it? Are you gonna tell somebody? Are you gonna ask for help? I don't know, man, I, I don't really wanna, you know. Yeah, ask for help. That's the way to get out of the sand, get on the rock, you have marriage problem, work problem, parenting problem, oh, I'll just figure this out on my own. Jesus keeps telling you, get prayer for it. Talk to somebody, nah, I got it. Are we gonna hear his words and put them into practice and live on the rock, or are we gonna fumble around in the sand and risk the big crash? Wherever you are today, wherever you're building on the sand, whatever you're building on the sand, listen, with that little project you got, that little scheme you got going over on the sand, that you really don't want people to know about. God knows. And he's like, get out of there. Knock it off. Best case scenario, that thing just crumbles, but you remain intact over here. Worst case scenario, the whole thing crumbles. Yeah, you may still get in to heaven as though one leaping through the flames. But God has a better way. Jesus has a better way for you and me this morning. 
This is, listen, this is the opportunity, this is the good news that Jesus wants to call you and me into this morning, today. Today is a new day. Forget what happened behind. Forget past there, back there. Leave Egypt behind, leave the sand behind, leave this week behind. Today is a new day. This is the moment. All right, this is the opportunity to evaluate how you are living and turn, 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 next fill in, and start building more and more on the rock. More and more on the rock. Whatever you build there will last. It'll be eternal, significant, lasting. Stuff over here, it all gets shaken out. There's a time coming, Jesus says, when even the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken, but all who are in Christ will not be shaken. Anything that you've created in Christ, with Christ, will not be shaken. So, so this house that we bought, it had a chimney, all right? And I told you we're on a hill, and this chimney was just exposed. It was like the highest part of the hill. And the winds would come and beat against that, and it rains a lot in Seattle. The, the rain would go this way against that chimney. And I remember going, back, going up there, I knew I had to paint this chimney when we bought the house. And it's a big job, you have to scrape off the old paint. Big job, primer, you gotta do it right, right? Because the storm will expose you. <laughs> yep, so you, a, lot of, a lot of time working on that. And I'm done, I'm like, aha, awesome. And then I find out, a friend tells me, yeah, you're gonna have to do that every couple years. <laughs> right? Because it's, it's kind of on sand. The house was a blessing and a gift, but it's, it's, it's not gonna last. But listen now, listen. Whatever you do, whatever you choose to do, starting today, starting today, this, this week, whatever you do in obedience to Jesus, whatever little tiny thing that you do in him is another perfect, complete stone placed in the house of God, the eternal temple of God, and it will last forever. Every small act of obedience every, is, is like this piece, this little tiny piece, maybe no one else sees it but God, of trim that you've put on the temple of God that lasts and remains forever, the kingdom of God. Every small little act of obedience, every time you restrain yourself from hitting back or saying that choice word, whatever it is, it lasts. It becomes part of God's eternal lasting building. And that building is on the solid rock and it's made out of solid rock. We get to do this. That's the opportunity. Build more and more on the rock. Sand's a bad foundation because it shifts. It's unstable. You know, the other reason is it's not able to bear significant weight. And God wants to build you into something solid and weighty, hefty, the glory of God, the word glory in Hebrew, kavod, comes from kaved, which means weighty. The glory of God, the presence of God. See, he wants to build you and me into the type of people, the vessels, the little temples, where he can let his glory, his weight, his presence, his power fall and fill. He wants to make you a person of significance, of weight. And sand can't bear it. You can't can't build it there. It must be on solid ground. That's what God wants to do. So if you want more of God's presence, if you want to be building things, investing yourselves in things that last, if you want to be part of building his eternal temple, here's how. Here's how to move more toward number three, building more and more on the rock. Let's go back to what Jesus said. He made it simple for us. Number one, do this. Hear, hear Jesus' words. Hear them, listen to them. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is wise. It starts with hearing his word, not just once, not just once a week, not just a little bit here and there, regularly, repeatedly hearing his word. Be in his word, be in his written word. Be in his living word, praying, 
letting him speak to you because when we listen, God speaks. He wants to help you put into practice these words of his and to show you how. Verse 28, again. When Jesus had finished saying these things, Matthew 5 through 7, the crowds were amazed. Just like Marcus, he's so amazed. He's overwhelmed. Like they were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who has authority, exousia, power, dominion, the right and authority to speak authoritatively because he's the king of kings and not like the teachers of the law. They were amazed because the rock was speaking. The rock was speaking. To build your life more and more on solid ground on this rock, we need to regularly again and again hear Jesus' words. That's where it starts. All right, but it's not enough, right? We don't want to be just listeners and hearers of his words. We need to be doers. Number two, now put Jesus' words into practice. Do what he says. Obey. Do what, he's, do what he has said. Do what he's been saying to you. Do what he keeps bringing up to your attention. That thing that you've left undone. Or the thing that you're doing that he's calling you out of. Obey him. Otherwise, you're just building on sand. And it's going to crash. And it may take you and your loved ones with you. It's an opportunity for us to build, to build, to become more solid, to build something solid that lasts. All right, I'm gonna throw this last one in here because sometimes we get to this point where in our walk with Jesus where um, you can get a little stagnant. And, and this is, sometimes it's this reason. Number three, if you're already a builder on rock, if you're already, you know, building pretty much on rock, occasionally get over here on a side project, but you know, you're on the rock. If you're on the, on the rock, it's time to help others. Yes. It's time to help others get on the rock, know there's a rock, and build on the rock. And help them see where they're building on sand. Let Jesus use you in that. We need each other. We need others to help us build on the rock. We forget, and maybe we're fooling ourselves. We get deceived. We need one another. So if you're already building on the rock, start helping others. There we go. Sermon on the Mount. Pretty sweet. Jesus is pretty brilliant, right? (laughs) So let's do this. Let's stand, and we're going to let... Jesus, the rock, the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ move and reveal to us what he wants us to see. Praise you, Lord. Living God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for paying a high price to save us from the sand and get us onto solid ground. Thank you, Lord. We are in you. We're part of a kingdom now that cannot be shaken. We thank you, Lord. Everything will be shaken, but you and your people and your kingdom will remain. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity, Lord. Help us follow through. You've been speaking to us, Lord. You've been revealing things to us, Lord. We know you will today and this week, Lord God. Your spirit will show us We can't flee from your presence. Your spirit is always moving and speaking. So Lord, help us to hear what you're saying to us as we go through our week, Lord. Come Holy Spirit, show us now even, Lord. We ask that you would silence the enemy, keep out the distraction. Holy Spirit, what are you showing us that you want us to put into practice? What's your word to us now? Speak, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, give us a picture. Bring to mind those things, those sand projects that you're like, what are you doing? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, give us a vision for what you want to do with us on the rock, each one of us. 
what you want us to build, what you want us to be part of, what step you're taking, you're calling us to take, to live more on the rock, to build more on the rock, God. Help us not push it away. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would, by your Spirit, strengthen us to choose to do that thing, to exercise our will well. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit, to say yes to you. Thank you, living God, we love you, amen.